Welcome to the Produce Moms Podcast, where we believe there is a produce mom in all of us. I'm Lori Taylor, founder and CEO of the Produce Moms. For 10 years, I sold fresh produce to over 300 grocery stores in the U.S. And today, my team and I are fully focused on inspiring people to eat more fruits and vegetables. This show is just one of the ways that we hope to inspire you and your family to eat more produce and live a better life. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, join our community of almost 40,000 in all 50 states and over 30 countries by visiting theproducemoms.com slash subscribe. And be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. Thanks for being here. Enjoy today's show. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Produce Moms Podcast. I am Lori Taylor, the host of this show. And oh my goodness, I say it every episode, but I really am so blessed to host this show because we welcome the most amazing people who are advancing and changing agriculture and empowering the entire supply chain, empowering those of us at home, knowing, you know, securing our, our mission as consumers to make sure that our dollars are going for good and to Today's episode, it's it, we are celebrating something that's really important, Farm Worker Awareness Week. And we are welcoming three incredible stakeholders. They're all connected through the Equitable Food Initiative, also known as EFI. And we they have very different perspectives and point of views. So we're welcoming, welcoming Maria. She is with Andrew and Williamson. Uh, you might know of this company through the brand Good Farms. We're welcoming Tony. He is with Winset Farms. And then from EFI, we are welcoming Alice. So with that, I'd like to welcome our guest to the show today. And Maria, we'll start with you with the intro. So please say hello to our guests. Or, well, to our audience, you're the guest. And, um, and, and uh, just say hello, introduce yourself, let them know a little bit more about what you do. Hello, everyone. I'm happy to be here um, and to share with you about um, what Buenaventura Ranch, a division of um, Andrew Williamson does. Um, my name is Maria Goretti Mireles Gonzalez, and I am the human resources coordinator um, for our division. And um, well, I'm pretty much involved with EFI uh, because uh, here our, our company, I am the lead for the EFI program. I um, am in charge of coordinating the Mejoras Continuas, um, Continuous Improvements um, member meetings, uh, as well as any activities um, that we have um, with the FI here, our company. Oh, I love that. And Maria, I shared with you before the show, I had the opportunity to actually tour Andrew and Williamson Farms and, and meet some of the folks at Good Farms. Um, so it just kind of comes full circle in the episode today to welcome you and and have this great episode focused on, on Farm Worker Awareness Week. So thanks for being here. And Tony, please thank introduce you. yourself. All right. Um, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Tony Pacheco. I work for Windsor Farms. I'm the temporary foreign worker and health and safety manager at our um, Delta uh, branch in uh, British Columbia, Canada. Um, and um, I'm uh, the co-chair of uh, EFI. I'm the, I'm the guy that gets all the meetings ready with the agenda. Uh, you know, we go around taking pictures uh, every month of the facility to give updates to everybody. Um, and um, yeah, that's about it. Well, don't say that's about it. That's a lot. <laughs> Tony, uh, oh, welcome. We, we, thank you very much. <laughs> We're glad you're here. And and Alice, welcome at, welcome to our show. Thank you for being our guest. And thanks for all that you do at EFI. Please introduce yourself. Hi, thank you, Lori. And thank you for everyone to uh, highlight this really important uh, piece with farm worker awareness. Um, my name is Alice Linsmeyer, and I'm a workforce development facilitator and specialist with equitable food initiative that we call EFI. And I always say I have the best job because I get to work with uh, the trainings with the leadership teams of workers and managers in a collaborative team um, training that goes out and works with all the workers on the farm. So thank you for having me. 
Oh, well, yes. And I'm putting you in the hot seat right away. So you're not going anywhere just yet. Um, I, I know what EFI is, Equitable Food Initiative. I'm actually, I'm so honored and uh, proud of my role with your marketing advisory council. I truly believe in what this organization stands for. But Alice, I would love for you to define Equitable Food Initiative for the folks that are with us today that just are unaware of what the program is and what that label stands for. Sure. So uh, Equitable Food Initiative has as a mission to bring together the various actors in the supply chain, which are the growers, the farm workers and retailers and consumers to transform agriculture and improve the lives of farm workers. So how do we do that? We do that by working with people like Maria and Tony and their teams of workers and managers that come together in leadership team trainings. That's the central piece of the work is that the workers who are already putting so much um, into their skilled work also come around the table and talk together about how to improve the labor conditions, how to improve food safety and the environment. Um, And they work on problem solving and, and come up with really creative solutions to ensure that that the workers are safe, the food is safe, and the environment is safe. So important. Thank you. All right. So, Tony, we'll start with you. What does an average day look at, like? I mean, you uh, you manage the the temporary farm workers. You manage health and safety. Uh, so, explain more about what the typical day looks like in your role at Winset Farms, and and how how EFI is part of it every step of the way. Well, uh, for health and safety and uh, the temporary for a worker program, it's kind of hard to plan your day ahead because sometimes you just you get to work and you have to deal with things as, as they come up. We try to plan as much as we can with, like, for example, with worker arrivals and uh, training uh, regarding health and safety and food safe. Um, but um, I mean, we in this site in Delta, we employ about 196 uh, foreign workers from Guatemala. And then we still have about another maybe 150 to 200 worker local workers uh at peak time so we have four phases each phase grows uh, different varieties of um of uh, vegetables uh different types of tomatoes and stuff like that so we get we get to walk around make sure that everybody you know is working safely uh create a connection with the workers so when they see you uh you know they, they can approach to you with issues that they, the, the foreign workers may have in the housing uh, you know, like microwave not working or things like that. And we got to, we fix those uh, right away. So we got to keep the communication open with the workers. Um, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it can be challenging. Uh, but if, uh, if you stay on top of it, uh, I find that, um, you know, it, it works itself out. Uh, the training that we got three EFI uh, when I first became part of it uh, has helped a lot. Uh, not only myself, but uh, with the workers themselves. Uh, I mean, we, we've had workers that didn't want to be part of it. And we encourage them to 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 do it because they said they were very shy and they they couldn't uh, speak in front of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and after about six months of being on the program, I mean, this guys the turnaround was uh, just amazing. The confidence level went up. Uh, some of the guys became uh, you know uh, forklift operators, which they were also intimidated by because most of the workers that we have are from uh, the fields in Guatemala. Uh, you know, they pick by hand, uh, yeah, and, and you know, little, so not as much technology as what we have. In yeah, North exactly. America. Right, right. Yes. So, you know, so the guys get here, they're introduced to like electrical uh, greenhouse cards, scissor lifts, uh, logging in systems. Uh, you know, uh, we have guys that uh, we also started showing them how to use our computer system uh, to keep track of uh, inventory of produce and stuff like that. So all the guys that, that started that went through the EFI uh, course to become the reps for their uh, greenhouses. The the impact that it had, it was huge because their confidence level just went through the roof. And, and so uh, it, it'll Go ahead. Yeah, sorry, I've just got a question. So those folks, when you say they go through the EFI courses, that's your actual, those are the actual farm workers. They go through EFI trainings, is that correct? Correct. So each each department has um, uh, a rep. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, we have a four uh, greenhouses, four faces. We have a two uh, packing uh, facilities. Uh, so, and we have also have a, a Indo-Canadians, uh, people from India that live in Canada, uh, which have uh, limited English. So our, our, our meetings and reps are in, um, in Punjabi, Spanish, and English. So each face has a rep that speaks Spanish, uh, one that speaks Punjabi, and obviously the, the, the leadership team uh, speak English. So 
um, everybody's been empowered by uh, by the EFI program. And um, it's really cool to see our meetings uh, because we have to, obviously, I present them in English and Spanish, and then uh, we have a, a Punjabi translator. Uh, then our, our minutes are updated in three languages. All of our posters are in three languages. So it has um, brought the two cultures uh, closer together, too, because before, because, it, you know, yeah. obviously the Guatemalans don't speak Punjabi. Right. Uh, they, even though they work in the same area, they kind of kept their distance. Uh, but with uh, we always try to, uh, you know, integrate everybody. Uh, and that because of EFI, uh, they were kind of like, not forced, but they, they, they had to talk uh, in, like, within the groups. So now, you know, like they, they, they do uh, potluck lunches. They, they bring food from Guatemala, food from India. They share the uh, yeah. uh, I mean, through that, that. through that empowerment that EFI exactly. fosters, you've created real community on your farm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So absolutely. And Maria, I'd love to get some remarks from you and, and how things look at Andrew and Williamson. Um, you know, share a little bit more about what your day looks like and how EFI is part of the work that you do. You're the human resources coordinator. So how does it work in there? Okay. Well, um, for me, I'd like to start um, by sharing a little anecdote, how um, I started working for Buenaventura. Um, when they were doing interviews for my position, um, Alice and um, other um, co-workers of hers were doing a training here in Buenaventura, uh, an EFI training for um, more members to be certified. So um, I was invited to sit down uh, during that training just to listen and to see if that was that, that would be something of my interest. So obviously I loved it. I immediately fell in love with EFI. It really um, impacted me, um, how, you know, how to view uh, agriculture life. Right. And so, you know, um, I was very fortunate to be the chosen candidate for this position. That's amazing. So, yes. So what's um, the training? What does that um, introductory um, sit down look like? I mean, what do they talk about? So they were, I mean, they, they were doing the different activities with, um, with the uh, participants, um, you know, about the, the EFI norms and um, just uh, different uh, games and um, the lessons that, you know, they, they were teaching them um, mm -hmm. about, um, you know, all this um, Im improvements um, for, for the, um, for the agriculture jobs in or the companies. And I mean, I was just sitting there, just listening, just, uh, this was totally new to me, completely new. Uh, but there was just something very special um, that I found great value in it. And I noticed this was, um, for, they had been there for more than two days, but I was there for two days. And by the end, uh, I knew this was something that I wanted to be part of. And the reason why I, I share this is because since day one, um, EFI has been, you know, I've been part of EFI and EFI has been part of me working here for Buenaventura. And also um, I've noticed how it has become part of our culture as a company. EFI um, plays a big part in our um, everyday work life. And, um, you know, as our members are that have been um, with the EFI team the longest, they have become part of, or, or like the foundation um, for the EFI program to um, keep growing uh, for us. And they teach others about EFI, about the norms, about having a, a fair uh, work environment. I mean, people get, in, you know, that are really engaged in um in the EFI program and to pass on this information that they learn um through the EFI program and so every day you hear about it uh you know uh if, when I go out to the field uh people talk about EFI or they'll ask me questions or they'll show, share with me how they've um like the the people that um the new um, employees, how they are um, sharing with them what they know about EFI and how Buenaventura works and like all the things that they've learned or um, or how they have grown um, through EFI, all the valuable um, resources, information that they've received. Uh, then also every day when we are doing registrations for new employees, um, we talk to them about EFI. So since day one, they hear about EFI. 
I know. And so as you're, as you're talking, I'm like, gosh, Maria, would you even consider working somewhere that where EFI is not present? (laughs) I mean, it's like, you are so, you are such a, uh, you're such an ambassador for the program. It's wonderful. (laughs) Um, You know, I I really like it. I, it's, how can you I not? Think it's very important. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's such a great and you know important part of us. And and I've seen how it has greatly and positively impacted our workforce and you know our company in general. Mm-hmm. And then also uh, we have um the H2 A program here um in Buenaventura and well in um and W uh, as well, um, you know, for a whole company. And they also, um, even, you know, working for our corporate offices or, or our ranches in Mexico, they um, learn about EFI. And when they come here, it's not uh, too hard to um, have them join us and just continue with all this um, EFI culture that we have here in place because they know about it since, um, you know, working in Mexico. Yeah. So um, when they come work for us, it's like um, they also help us. They also yeah. help us in fours or they, you know, whatever new things they learn, they implement them and, and they help us to um, encourage others to do so. Um, so, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very interesting uh, program. And then um, it's part of I who mean, you are. That's for sure. That yeah, comes through I, big time. I love yeah. it. Now, Alice, you, uh, so Maria mentioned that you were actually there the day that she sat down in that meeting. So I'd love for you to share a little bit more about what does the Equitable Food Initiative, how do you guys actually, what does that presentation look like that obviously, you know, changed Maria's life and passion for her job? I always say I have the best job in EFI because I get to work with Maria, Tony, and their teams. Um, And what we come into uh, a place, we realize that they are the ones with the skills. Uh, They have been working for a long time and some of them decades. And so what we just try to create is a space for people to shine. Um, We bring together all Uh, job functions of the farm. We make sure that there's women. Uh, If there's other languages, like Tony said, Punjabi, Spanish, English, but there's also indigenous workers that are bilingual, indigenous speaking, um, that we uplift in the vocabulary, in the discussion of the program, because they're the ones day to day implementing these incredibly hard jobs, but also have the really great perspective of what what needs change, what could be improved and uh, come up with, they go out and interview workers and they find out what's happening. They get to the root causes, they come, they brainstorm solutions and come up with solutions. So it's just creating the space for them to do it. It's very interactive. If Maria recalls, I think we had her acting out a skit at one point with her team during the conflict resolution portion of the training. And she's a really good actor. I that, must say. You know, that's um, setting that great foundation for the community that we were talking about with Tony previously. You know, I mean, you're <laughs> doing it from the very inception. I love it. Yes. And so um, the workers often say afterwards, they were like, oh, I didn't want to go to this because I thought it was going to be another boring port. PowerPoint presentation. And after just the first day, they're they're laughing. People who are really shy or are, are speaking. They're making sure everyone has a space to speak. Um, and they are just supporting each other in, in bringing forth the best of their skills and gifts to keeping each other safe, keeping the product safe, and keeping the environment safe. So they're really involved. It's, it's really a lot of teamwork that happens, communication, teamwork, small groups, acting, singing, whatever it takes to be able to be able to um, bring across the different kinds of ideas and uh, implement the different standards that we have. Yes, that's, that's wonderful. And Tony, obviously with your, with, with your wheelhouse at Winset Farms, health and safety manager and temporary farm worker manager, 
oh my goodness, the COVID-19 pandemic must have turned your, turned your job description upside down. Um, yeah. but I really, I would love to, um, just have you share some remarks on, on what's changed since March of 2020 for you and, and the team at Winset and, and really all farm work, all farm workers. Well, yeah, I mean, um, it was just like worldwide, right? So, I mean, I, it, it didn't really take a toll on me until like uh, December, early January, when everything kind of slowed down. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's when all the, 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 the whole year, uh, I felt I felt it on my shoulders when everything kind of like, uh, because we, we went into cleanup season, so we didn't need as many workers and stuff like that. Uh, but once everything kind of uh, wound down, that's when, when I really felt it on my shoulders. And then it, it just put into perspective all the stuff that we went through and how we got through it. Um, yeah, you know, you guys, because we, I mean, uh, the foreign workers, mm-hmm. go ahead. No, I just was going to say, I mean, you guys never took a day off. I mean, people need to no. remember like farmers. We just, I mean, the farming industry never stopped. No. So yeah, I, literally we didn't, I didn't take any vacation last year. Uh, we were doing 12, 14 hour days. I had to come in on weekends. Um, and, uh, because we have the foreign workers living on site. Um, right. So. At the time, I had about 132, I believe. Uh, then we had to, um, the government, uh, uh, the Minister of Agriculture and, and Health contacted us and they asked us, what are we doing for our workers to keep them safe in the housing? Uh, so luckily, a couple of days earlier, we had brainstorm here with uh, our um, uh, food safety manager and our HR manager and uh, you know, said, okay, let's let's make dividers uh, for the people that you know, where we have more than one person living in a in a room. So we went in there and we hung this uh, the sheets to create a division between the workers at, at nighttime. Um, we have to stagger them, you know, head to toe uh, on their on their bunk beds and and just and dividers and getting hand sanitizer and because as you know, everybody was running out. Mm-hmm. So. Um, we, we had to put all these new um, regulations into place pretty much overnight. And then we obviously we have to train it in Punjabi, in English, and then Spanish. Uh, then I had people coming. Uh, the, the workers don't have family in Canada, so uh, pretty much we're the pretty, pretty much the only outlet they have. They don't speak English. So they will come into, into my office, um, you know, and then just pour their hearts out that they were so concerned about their families back home because they couldn't go home. Right. Right. So, you know, so we became kind of like a psychiatrist for the workers trying to calm them down and just encourage them to get back to work and, and you know, keep safe, uh, you know, uh, keep everything clean. Uh, we had to put protocols for when they go shopping into town, how to do it. Um, it was just, uh, it was crazy. So, but the, the procedures that we put in, in place, they worked. So um, the... We, we had meetings a couple of weeks after with the, with the ministries and, you know, our, what we did, what we tried out in the housing became a standard um, for the whole province. And then eventually other farms in, in the rest of Canada started following. Wow. So, yeah. So um, again, because, because of the way the, the problem solving that we learned in the EFI training um, and including, we, we had to include the, the reps, because they had to, you know, take the information back to to their faces, and for the Guatemalans to their houses, uh, it was pretty. Uh, it was pretty hectic. Uh, at the time, it is, you know, it almost seemed like fun because we just like go, go, go. Uh, but like I said, it wasn't until the end of the year until everything kind of sunk in and uh, mm-hmm. put into perspective the kind of year that that we had and the, that the world had. Yeah, and without right. the EFI program and, and procedures and policies in place at Winset, do you feel like you would have been um, as successful with your crisis management and, and keeping your workforce, you know, deploying all the necessary needs and, and being that true example for, frankly, your entire country? Um, you know, before EFI came in, our, our it, it was, we didn't have to make a lot of changes uh, when EFI came in because the things that we had uh, thought about putting in, into place, mm-hmm. uh, EFI had them. Uh, they made it a lot easier for us to implement it because it That's would have good. been way too hard, like, like like with the group training and stuff like that. So before our health and safety committee, uh, we just made the decisions as, as uh, managers or, or mm-hmm. supervisors, and then we just informed the workers. 
But one thing that EFI that I love that EFI did is they encourage for us to get more feedback from the workers because they're the ones on the on the field or inside the greenhouse on the on their packing area. So we started getting more feedback. Not that we didn't get any before, but we they were very included in everything. Mm-hmm. And um, like I said, because I mean I'm I'm in my office, you know, um, most of the time, um, and they're out on the field, so they get to see things that we don't get to see. I I can assume all day about how things are done. Uh, in there, but they're going to be the ones that are going to actually tell me how they're done. You know what I mean? So uh, with, with EFI, uh, that was a huge eye opener for me. And uh, it it was, it was because of the way that they taught us how to do the problem solving and brainstorming um, that I think we were uh, able to, to get through it way, way faster and more efficient. I love that. And undoubtedly that community component that you talked about previously, you know, there's a level of trust between the farm yes. workers and the company, um, a unique level of trust uh, on any EFI farms. Um, so I, I definitely think that that had to have played into it as well. All right. Yeah, no, I did. Good, good. Well, we are, um, I mean, I, I love this episode. We are celebrating something that's so important, Farm Worker Awareness Week. And when you think about Equitable Food Initiative, when you think about um, farms that are leading the way, farms like Winset and Andrew and Williamson, those farms, um, I think that you guys are great examples. Your passion has come through loud and clear in this episode. And, you know, as we, uh, you know, near the end of our show today, I would like to give each of you a chance to say one thing that you really want our listeners to understand about farm workers amidst farm worker awareness week. And I'll go first, if that's okay. Uh, and it was something that has been said a few times in our conversations. And this is, this really is such a skilled labor. Uh, this is something, you know, an EFI I've had the opportunity to see it with my own eyes. It's wonderful how the EFI program has empowered this skilled workforce to become even even greater professionals and feel even more important in a, in, in the farming economy and in the farming operations. So with that, I'd welcome you, Alice, to, to kind of kick things off with what's the one thing you want our listeners to know um, as we are admits farm worker awareness week. EFI has always um, celebrated farm worker awareness week, but this year it's been especially poignant given the added layer of what they have had to do with the whole implementation, as they talked about, about the, the COVID protocols and the world recognized farm workers as, as, as essential, but they've always been essential and they will always be essential. So what I'd like to just be able to say is that, you know, when you bring people to the table, either in a training and listen, as these two participants have said, you learn so much and it brings so much, but I would like to invite consumers to bring to the table these products that have that are farm worker assured as with the EFI label and these different farms that are implementing this because they are working triple to make sure that everyone's safe and healthy from themselves to their families, to your families. And so make room at your table for not just these products, but also awareness of what the workers are putting in to make it come to you safely. That's great. And Alice, where can people go to, like, what should consumers look for when they're shopping? You mentioned the label. Yeah. The EFI label looks like a leaf and it looks, and it says um, uh, sustainably grown farm worker assured. And if you want more information, we, you can also look at our website at equitablefood.org slash farmworkerawareness. And Maria, I would love to get some closing remarks from you. And again, what do you want folks to know as we are amid Farmworker Awareness Week? Well, um, when we go grocery shopping, you know, sometimes we pick our vegetables and our fruits without being, you know, completely aware of what we're taking to our homes, to our tables. Behind um, every vegetable, every fruit, there's a person. And behind that person, there is a family. Um, It has really had, um, you know, a a great impact uh, in my life, in my personal life and in my work life to 
be sharing with all this um, farm workers every day, because as I learned, not only about their work lives, but also, you know, when they share to me about their lives, their, their families, you know, that's, it's very impacting. And then also how EFI has um, been improving uh, the life of agriculture, um, all the great things, uh, all the great value that has um, been adding to our work and how the field work, unfortunately, has been seen like something less than some, you know, like something that it's not too valuable or interesting as other jobs, but, you know, it is very valuable. It, it is a treasure and I have great respect. And the more I work here and I share with farm workers, the greater my, you know, my respect is for them because it's not only the physical work that they put in, it's their life behind what they do. I mean, what they provide to their families here locally or, um, in turn, you know, wherever their families are. Like uh, Tony said, you know, they have farm workers from Guatemala. We have farm workers from Mexico, from um, Honduras, El Salvador, you know, different parts of the world. And all these families are being benefited, but what their family members here in the United States and our agriculture companies do. Um, and, you know, EFI has, uh, you know, done a great job um, improving the life for these farm workers. And I really do appreciate, you know, from the bottom of my heart, all the hard work that EFI does and that they allow us and give us the great opportunity to be part of this, to, um, to work with EFI and for EFI and also uh, to have this great um, impact in our farm worker lives. Mm, that's so good. And Tony, with that, I'm going to ask you to have the closing remarks for today's show. Um, and before I hand you the mic for the for the final words and the closing goodbye, I do want to just once again, thank you all for the important and great work that you do. Uh, Farm Worker Awareness Week is something that raises awareness for everyone, but it's with confidence that I can say, uh, you know, it, it's part of the daily lives of folks like you and so many of the great people in our industry. So Tony, with that, any closing remarks, any, any one takeaways or things that you want our audience to know um, about your perspective on Farm Worker Awareness Week? Yeah, I guess, I mean, uh, just to add to what the latest said, um, I think the customers should really educate themselves, uh, you know, just because you see a, a tomato or cucumber or whatever on a, on a store, um, there's usually a story behind, you know, all the all the produce that you see, um, and um, I find that, um, um, for example, it, it, it's called a low skills program uh, to bring uh, foreign workers into Canada, but I don't, I don't find it, that it, it uh, that it is a low skill. Uh, you know, it's like a, Alice said, it's, there's it's an essential service or essential workers. And uh, sometimes in the, in the media, all you hear is uh, the negative uh, about farm workers and so the way that some farms treat their workers. But, you know, there's a lot of farms, um, like Wynn said, and, and where uh, Maria works and, uh, and other farms that are certified under EFI that we're trying to do everything possible to make it as fair and as good for the workers that are coming from uh, outside Canada or the, or the United States or even locally uh, for them to uh, be able to, uh, you know, have a job where they're respected and, uh, you know, that, uh, health and safety is, um, is important. Um, and it just, it, it benefits everybody. So I really encourage consumers to go out there, really educate themselves with, uh, what EFI is and what it stands for. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Produce Moms podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a featured guest, just send an email to Lori at theproducemoms.com. We know there is a Produce Mom in you because there's a Produce Mom in all of us. Join our community on Facebook and all social platforms. Help us change the way America eats. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.